Eventually we win. A president has to have immunity. In fact, Joe Biden could be prosecuted for trying to stop this man from becoming the next president of the United States. And the other thing is I did nothing wrong. We did nothing wrong. He's immune. Presidents can't obstruct justice. He, he's, his intent wasn't corrupt. The case is moving too fast or moving too slow. A few moments later. He was too busy. They were his documents. They're declassified. They aren't even classified at all. First Amendments and the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, and tenth Amendments too. And the insane thing is that's just a slither of his excuses. Closing arguments had wrapped up in there. We just have to fact check a lot and yeah. brace yourself because this is going to take a moment there. After Trump was seen standing off to the side, swaying like a petulant school bully, waiting to be apprehended for his wrongdoing, he swiftly got in front of the camera and in mere seconds apart, made the following statements. As president, you should have immunity. And as president, I'm going to indict Joe Biden. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. <clears throat> you know, I try to look past the low hanging fruit and not retreat to shallow insults, but when I hear people say that they're voting for Donald J. Trump because he's a smart guy, and then I hear statements like this, that low hanging fruit starts to become a little more appetizing because the man is an unequivocal Egypt. In 2016, they had no terrorists that they know of that came into the country, none. You know, I had the travel ban. They but more so, he is a liar. And what most liars do when cornered is they try to make up excuses, many of them. To which CNN's Abby Phillip did us the honor of listing many of Trump's excuses ranging from indictments to sexual assault cases. He says he's immune. Presidents can't obstruct justice. He, he's, his intent wasn't corrupt. The case is moving too fast or moving too slow. It's an unfair venue. The judge is biased and so are the clerks. The juries too. He's never met her, he doesn't know her, He's she's not his type. It was his personal account, political persecution, witch hunt, perfect phone call, the deep state. It wasn't an insurrection. He wasn't notified that it was a crime. His lawyers advised him, double jeopardy, the speech was peaceful, the students weren't defrauded, the Presidential Records Act. He was too busy. They were his documents. They're declassified. They aren't even classified at all. The First Amendment, and the Fourth, the Fifth, the Sixth, and Tenth Amendments too. And as I said, this is merely a slither of the endless CVS receipt length amount of excuses the former president has provided to try and excuse his abhorrent behavior. And this comes after he was offered a Fox News red carpet that he seemed to get lost on. Donald Trump, welcome. <laughs> And this is how you combat by pushing back on each and every lie bubble wrapped in bigotry. Wrapped up in there, we just have to fact check a lot and yeah. brace yourself because this is going to take a moment there. He, listen, the overarching message that he was really putting out there was he was saying that this is a Joe Biden indictment and it's not. This is a civil fraud trial in New York. Joe Biden did not set this up. He was going after the attorney general there in New York, Letitia James, he was calling her a hack. He was saying that she was corrupt. Keep in mind, there is someone else who went after her uh, for an investigation she did, and that was Andrew Cuomo, the former Democratic governor of New York. She uncovered uh, and, and put out a quite detailed and well-supported report on his COVID death numbers uh, that had been manipulated. He was saying all along there, there's no evidence of fraud. Yes, there is. Uh, his attorney was saying that, yes, there is. That has actually already been determined here that he actually inflated the value of his assets by a factor of three. Yeah, his attorney at one point made the argument that they made in court that real estate is an art and not a science. The square footage of a property is a determined thing that you can measure. It's not really an art. The president, former president, also made the case that his argument won in the Court of Appeals and that Judge Arthur Engeron is ignoring that because it's not the result that he wants. That's actually a misrepresentation of what took place. The uh, Court of Appeals scaled back the initial case that was made by Letitia James uh, for example, determining that the statute of limitations had run out on certain charges, removing his daughter Ivanka Trump from uh, the case itself. 
uh, very far from saying that, that the appeals court sided with him. In fact, the appeals court uh, would have shut the case down, according to legal experts, if they had felt that there wasn't a case there. Uh, further, the president uh, made the case that uh, there was only one witness against him, and that was his former fixer, Michael Cohen, uh, someone who he said was a convicted felon, convicted of lying. Michael Cohen was convicted in part for lying on behalf of former President Trump, so make of that what you will. Uh, he also made claims about uh, Burisma and, and Joe Biden, things that were largely false. Or even as they did on CNN also, simply cutting away from it to again reiterate the facts that no court in the United States found any significant voter fraud. Judges chosen by Trump and Republicans throughout each and every case. I worked on that, that's what I was doing. We're listening and, uh, to and former President speaking there alongside two of his attorneys, at least one of them who was in the room, making that argument earlier with that three judge panel. Of course, a few fact checks and reality statements on what you're hearing there. There is no evidence of voter fraud. Many of courts have found that there has never been any evidence of it that Trump has been able to bring, despite what he is continuing to say there. It is still a notable comment coming six days before the Iowa caucuses in the 2024 election. Ellie Honig and Karen Agnew. So if he wants to continue his losing strategy by pretending that he didn't lose, then let him, but never allow for the lies to go unchecked. Insults, invective, and outright lies. That's what we heard from Donald Trump in Iowa this weekend. He held four events in the state ahead of the caucuses. If you take a look, I mean, the wars, I don't know what it is. The Civil War was so fascinating, so horrible, was so horrible, but so fascinating. It was... Uh, I don't know. It's just different. I just find it. I'm so attracted to seeing it. So many mistakes were made. See, there was something I think could have been negotiated, to be honest with you. I think you could have negotiated that. All the people died. So many people died. I think it's, uh, you know, Abraham Lincoln. Of course, if you negotiated it, you probably wouldn't even know who Abraham Lincoln was. How he would negotiate the end of slavery, what he considers negotiable there, he did not say. And he spent time at multiple rallies downplaying the insurrection on January 6, 2021, defending those who rioted, defiled the Capitol, and tried to stop the peaceful transfer of power. People are storming the United States. When you talk about insurrection, what they're doing, that's, that's the real deal. That's the real deal, not patriotically and peacefully. Trump's mob wasn't a peaceful protest. It was a violent assault. Those who are in American prisons for storming the Capitol are there because they were convicted in courts of law or will get due process and no amount of rebranding will change the fact. Thanks so much for watching. We're only a few subscribers short of 2 million subs. Please subscribe right now to the Midas Touch YouTube channel for free and help us grow this unapologetically pro-democracy network.